seven eight three six zero pound. Again, the pin number is five nine one zero seven eight three six zero pound. You have to hit star six to take off the mute. So I'll, I'll give this a minute or so for citizen comments via the, the phone. Give them another minute. All right, let the record show there are no citizens comments via um, our phone. Uh, there are no citizens in the audience tonight, so with that said, I'll move on to our engineer's report. Thank you, Mr. President. We do have a copy of my report on the agenda this evening. If Mr. Wawa um, has the project status update, uh, right now we are awaiting the uh, final revised plans for reporting. Um, also, from what I understand from the applicant uh, yesterday, he is in the process of getting all of the agreements together, uh, getting all of the escrow checks to the township. Um, we're hoping um, next Thursday to be having a, a pre construction meeting, although they will have to have. All of that information to the township and the plan for school park and part of the work. Um, the Case Lynn project, the aging short is substantially completed. The contract work, uh, we gave them a punch list. Uh, and I'm working through that, although I will tell you that since we had our meeting concerning the punch list, we have had great every other day. Um, there is some final grading that needs to be done as part of the clearing and grubbing on the material portion of the contract. And unfortunately, until we can have a few days of, of warm weather to try some of that out, we're not going to get the board to those lots. Um, we're expecting, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, that project will be completed. The auto zone, the 10 dot HOP, it's not in my report. The HOP and the single plan have been approved. They asked the township to go to P160 as well as sign the, the HOP uh, signal plan. Uh, we received revised plans this morning. So by next week, uh, or within this week, I would say that we'd be able to sign that and get that over. To uh, corner, so they'll be closed. Um, that's got a review to do. Wilbur well, Clubhouse, they they completed that, or they completed, they completed all of the reporting and had a pre construction meeting. They started work. The um, Dichester Avenue streetscape update we are currently we're, we're missing three access easements. Um, executed by the residents along Chester Avenue that was required by PennDOT, and we're hoping we have those shortly. Uh, we've gone through 14 of them, I believe, is the number, uh, and have gotten 14 executed. So there's three outstanding. We're hoping we can um, quickly get that project contracted. Uh, we're we're like to get started on that. Um, I believe, I do want to mention that obviously we've had some extremely heavy rain. Um, we have some work to do over at the, the Bergdahl Basin. That work will not be completed, just so the residents are aware, because I know that we've got two complaints. I've spoken to both of those 
directly or communicate with the federal for those residents. We're going to wait to the fall because you know, we have grass that's dying and we have plants that are dying because we had no uh, rain for quite a while. So we do have probably about a third of the plants that need to be replaced. The contract will have to be replacing. There is a request um, to for the board to do a resolution approving an Act 537 for asset transfer for the Del Fora Aqua purchase. I've done a review of that. Uh, we have some, some concerns about that. We did not receive any of the exhibits that they discussed in the report. We've asked Del Fora to provide us those exhibits so that we can do a a thorough review. A lot of the exhibits, a lot of the report says, see the exhibit so we understand what this is referring to. We don't have those exhibits. Uh, I'll provide that. Planning Commission has to do a review and make comment back as part of the 537, and, and they're asking for a resolution. That should be done um, in, in our meeting that we had with Del Four, they had a meeting of all the municipal engineers throughout the county that are serviced by Del Four. Uh, they were looking between September and January. January was their drop dead date to get these resolutions in. So we have some time. Um, I would expect that the planning commission you know, have it on by September and January. I know that it was on the agenda for July. Is on if they're oh it's only August, isn't it? I'm sorry. I think I think the gasoline fumes from, from my flooding projects on, on Tuesday are still affecting my brain. They'll have it at their August meeting, I'm sorry. Which could bring in uh, ready for the September meeting. And that's all I have unless anyone has any questions. I just um I followed up with Steve Moyer. I think I copied you on it. And once again, the board um, has authorized us to at least look into what our uh, options are in terms of forcing the, the um, I'm sorry, forcing the uh, builder to complete the work because they are, as you said, they're having damage in the one. That we received where the, that one of the units, um, my punch list actually notes that there is an issue with water that's that's hitting the foundation wall of, of uh, number two, 2000 Village Way. Um, in discussions with Mr. Costa called me uh, yesterday afternoon and uh, he is not willing to do any grading, doesn't feel that it's necessary. I sent him a follow-up email today indicating that, that we, we did have complaints from the residents uh, because of the storm. I understand that it was a very large storm. However, it was on our punch list and, and something needs to be done with that. I do have some ideas on how to remediate that without doing full grading back through there. I'm going to reach out and see if I can't have a meeting with him and discuss it if he chooses not to take that recommendation or do what's on the approved plan, the grading that's on the approved plan, then quite frankly, I think we'll have to, we'll have to uh, have the solicitor uh, get something done. Um, the other thing is uh, I also sent both you and Micah an email about Peach Street. So I hope we're moving ahead with the legal descriptions so that we could, and I guess somebody has to do a, an evaluation of what added work needs to be done there. The the Peach Street that's toy with with the addition of the season. Yeah. Um, I think Alex has that completed already. Okay. Yeah. So the yeah, I don't know that there's any change in in the legal descriptions from what I gathered. It'll just be an inlet in the street that will collect the water. I think it's two inlets actually that will collect the water in the street and then use the the easements that we already uh, had had prepared. Well, if 
if the work doesn't require the easement, if we can work around it with the extra inlet, then we may not need it. But I, we need to get the plans, and then well done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Beach Street, um, um, I got a complaint Tuesday in the middle of the storm. A woman asked me to come look at the river running through the, the bottom down there. Long story short is um, I told her in the future we had some stormwater work going on in that area. I'd get her, you know, some information on it so somebody can get what the, the problem is, is when we brought the neighbors in to look at that plan, the neighbors down further down on Greenwood felt that it would impact them severely and they would end up getting more water in their backyards. So they were not, you know, um, she's from the 1800 block. Yeah. So that, that's, so well, that's the side, right? Yes. Right. So well, that side, it, it was, it, it wasn't Donna toy, was it? What's the name? Toy. Donna Toy, because no. she knows we're doing work. Okay, no. well, let me know and we'll... I have it in my emails and I'll... Yeah. Okay, thanks. All right. That's all I have. The only, the only uh, topic I'd like to touch on is the Jennifer Way Basin. Um, I, I believe we're still trying to work on the uh, easement to get on there. Um, I know we have easements in place trying to work Work with, work with my with my residents um, to get back in there. There's no other way. There's no other access point. Well, the plan initially had the access. It's actually on a potential county property. Mm -hmm. um, the resident that is at the end of the cul-de-sac right next to the Upper Park property has had some issues previously with. Um, we actually marked out where the previous property line was. Um, in the meantime, when, when we felt that we were going to be utilizing this property, we actually put in an application with DEP to do a string crossing. So we'll have to come in from Belmont through the woods get to the basin if we can't use the property and Jennifer Lodge. I have a phone call into him. I will call him again to see if we can uh, resolve the matter. But just let the board know is, you know, whatever we disturb on the property, I'm going to tell him that we would replace it whole until so there would be any damage to it. If there's no... Is it isn't the problem that he he's on the easement? Partially, or, but I think I think what he's afraid of is you know his property getting damaged as well. I'm going to tell him you know if we well, cross the line or get damaged at all, then we would. Yeah, we we restore we right. restore property to its original condition, but Correct. you know you you also can't build on an easement. It, the, a permanent structure. The well, the issue with the easement is actually down a couple properties where there's the permanent structures. The, the issue here is that the property abuts directly to township property, and there's there's no fe fence or anything that delineates the land. So I, I think there's just he's some concerns. I think the piece of property I'm talking about Joe yeah. is all the way at the end of Jennifer Way at the cul-de-sac where there's there's no there's no structures built right. on there. Right. Yeah. Right. The, the, which is we didn't use the 25 foot easement 10, 20 foot easement 10 foot on either side because of issues with sheds that were placed within that easement but we went down to the township property which is closer to the cul-de-sac and we were going to utilize that area uh, there's no other questions for Let, that's quick it's engineer. just a quick one we know when a road program starting we sent the contracts to AF Damon um, a week ago. In talking to to Steve Crow from Damon on Tuesday, he was he was doing some um, remedial work for us with, within for the flood right by his shop. His shop actually got flooded. He had 17 feet of water in his shop, 
um, but he uh, he is operating. He has a few different projects to do. He said that we'll have him from September on. So I don't have a specific date uh, at this the, point, yeah. but it looks like it'll yeah, be September, September, October. One more, just one more thing. The uh, pre-construction committee, is that just for the Wawa to start that? The pre, the pre-construction, is that for a Wawa only or not the schoolhouse? Right. For the schoolhouse and then for the whole project. Okay. And also when we go Do it at the same time. Well, not the same time, but right. I'm coming down once in a month. Right. So I'm sorry not to charge. Charge. Try to keep the cost down. Okay. Thank you. If there's nothing else for our engineer, we'll move on to our solicitor's report. Mr. Mike Pierce. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, it's been a pretty busy month with agreements. We are in the process of finalizing all of the agreements for the uh, right properties auto zone the Wawa Provco property, Jake's Fireworks, uh, and there was a, a couple of others that have been completed, but uh, I think we're at least in the, uh, in the final stages for most of those. Uh, we have the Bethel Avenue zoning map amendment, which is gonna be scheduled for a public hearing in September as per the requirements of the municipality's planning code. Uh, tonight, I would like, uh, if possible, Mr. President, to get authorization from the board to advertise the, uh, the ordinance itself, as well as the public hearing for that zoning map amendment so that we are within the timeframes for the municipality's planning code. It has to be advertised. I generally recommend it advertising it twice. It has to be advertised at least once, 30 days prior to the public hearing. And then I usually recommend that we have a second advertisement, uh, no less than seven days the property also has to be posted and the neighbors notified as well. So I, I'm asking for an action item this evening if you would authorize those appropriate advertisements and notices. I can ask for a motion that's second right now. Mm -hmm. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. The motion is carried. The Galbraith subdivision, we continue to work through that. There's a question about. Uh, the easement, I think we're going to get that resolved either through a meeting or through a conference, uh, and hopefully that will be available for your review either at this month or at the September meeting at the latest. Uh, I'm continuing to work on the uh, ATV ordinance and the other zoning ordinance amendments. Quite frankly, it's been a little busy with all the, uh, the agreements that need to be done, so uh, they were pushed back a little bit, but I will try and get some, uh, some preliminary things available to you for, uh, for next week. Um, we have some issues, as uh, Commissioner Biaco knows, uh, we're trying to set up a meeting with the residents at Somerset. They've got a new uh, engineer uh, who sent in some information, and uh, uh, we're going to need a lot more detail and a lot more information before we can commit to, uh, to anything. And we're hopeful that, that the, some of the meeting, apparently, uh, they also have a new attorney. So um, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, we have... Mm -hmm. Do you think we'd be better going uh, over there, uh, online or setting that up in person? Um, I, I think uh, I, I would do it either way. It's, it's up you're, to you. You're fine either way? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can do it as a Zoom meeting. It's fine. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can do whatever, whatever people are comfortable with. All right. And as many as they want to reach out. I'll be here so we can always do this. We can yeah. do it with this thing. Yeah, we can do a Good. kind of a okay. hybrid thing. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, we updated the uh, solicitor opinion letter for the annual audit. Um, let's see. Uh, I attended the uh, planning commission uh, meeting on July the 27th, and I answered some several follow-up questions regarding that. Uh, I've reviewed the RFP documents for the towing contract. I understand we've received several bids for that. Um, all 
everything else is seems to be in line and uh, routine in nature. So at least we're trying to address it anyway. So. Thank you. Any questions or comments for solicitor? I have one for 800 Galbraith. Yes. You, you said it's, I'm just trying to find out where to, I saw the planning board's recommendation from that meeting. We have Alex there as a, their engineer. We have you now at the thing. I'm just confused on why some of the recommendations weren't given that night for the planning board. There were recommendations and there was a lot of discussion back and forth about whether or not they should put that easement on the, where the, and I'll call it the, the lot where the house is because there's steep slopes there and there are issues related to establishing that easement. <clears throat> I think that the, the, the planning board was satisfied and I think the direction that we're going is they're going to remove that easement from the actual recorded plan when it's done because there is access to that second lot through the unpaved street. Any developer right. that comes in would have to develop that and continue that street and it's what is it? Um, um, Randall. Randall, Randall down so that they have the complete access. That's where we're trying to go. So as not to create any kind of a flag lot or any kind of, a, of a, an express easement through that lot because of some of the, uh, the contour difficulties that would result in that. And we think that that seems to be really the best way to go about it, but we've just got to get them to remove that from the plan or the final approval so that it will be easier to deal with. So, I mean, I mean, the recommendation that's coming from between yourself and Alex. Alex or, and Lisa, we've all right. we've all been discussing that. We we've we've been back and forth with it. Originally, it was it wasn't going to be on there. Then it was going to be on there. There were concerns that were raised that night. You know, well, then that road that doesn't have access which is where we went into the whole thing like any development that's being done for that second lot would automatically come before the board as a land development application so we could then enforce the the extension of randall to include that but we did not want to have that easement sitting on the plan because their intention is to sell that front lot as just an individual lot and we didn't want to create any additional problems between if there were two different people that that ended up buying those lots. So if we come up with a solution on they, re, they remove that easement, that means they could still come back next Thursday night at our meeting. And I think, but there may have been a scheduling conflict. I'm not sure. So that, you on, know, on their end, yeah, I, I think we've already got it. We've already got an extension. Right. Yeah. Easy, yeah. So. But I think we're going to get that resolved. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. So the extension letter would be just for us, and not having to go back to the planning board again. Oh, it would not go back to the planning board. It would just be for us. Yes. Okay. You yes. Don't, we don't need an extension letter. We have we have until so, September. Yeah, right. we do so, now. We do now. <laughs> right. but I don't know that we did before. Uh, we do well, now. my understanding is we had until September 18th made a decision. That's correct. Right. So correct. we don't need an extension. You don't need an additional extension right. letter. Right. Yes. That's right. So, you know, I understand Commissioner Rakowski's concerns. Um, and I, I just didn't want them coming here and us not being on the same page. Right. That, that has happened several times. I just want to get this worked out. And um, when they come, at least we could be on the same page. But so yep. I'm not trying to. That's the goal. I'm not trying to slow it down. I just I just want I want the process to go smoothly. No. Oh, I understand because I mean the house that the house the lot they want to sell now they want to sell. They don't know what they want to do with the lot behind them. Well, we, they want to sell it. They want to sell they it. They want to sell it. It's two different ones. That's right. what they said at the planning commission. But what I would ask, and because I grew up in the area, I know the area, I know the people. Period. But if there was a question, come come to me, because nobody has. And I I, I had questions and raised, and, and it's not this board's issue. I mean, it is in a way, but the easement they're talking about was a part of the street that we vacated. And when I looked at that street for Tyson, how do we get away with just vacate, vacate one side of the property? 
and that not the whole street. I mean, I mean that's stuff that I found, and there's no fixing it now or whatever. And 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 I know Randall goes out. I walked it. We had the issue with the sewer flooding out the last house. I know the water stopped at Randall. I know the issue. There's no fire hydrants, and that's all directed after if somebody comes in right. to develop. Because I also found out on the other side, we had an issue, and at least since we're on this page real quick, because you're going to be involved, it's difficult again. I had another one on Hillside Avenue. Rankin was vacated through the township, right. but nothing was dedicated to the homeowners. I mean, on their deeds, or the one house was just sold with the lot, and that little slither they need or want to build for this house, but... But now well, we have it, it automatically goes back to them once it's vacated. It doesn't it automatically goes back. To it doesn't them. show on their deed. I don't care whether it shows on the deed. It automatically goes or the back. title company wouldn't do anything with yeah. it with them because I mean, they said they didn't see it. So I believe with this property, one of the issues is that there are existing utilities that fall within that right away. So there's a stormwater and a sewer sewer. So there's so, so I mean, creating, that gets that a little more true. complicated too. And that we have right. to. I'm going to have to address that now because it just came onto our plate. But I'm, I'm just saying. It's, I, I don't know how much we'll have to address, but we'll certainly take a look at it. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Any questions? Any other questions or comments for our solicitor? I just have one. Um, I'm going to cover it underneath my report, and then um, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, ask you then. So we'll move on to our managers. Report. Good evening, everybody. Uh, a couple items tonight. The first item in your packet is a uh, draft job advertisement and the uh, draft job description for a finance director. I'd like you to look through that and give me any feedback. Uh, what I would like is eventually to either this month or next month to get authorization to be able to advertise that, to be able to take a look at applicants with the intention to be hiring that position for basically the start of next year. Um, the Boothwind Town Center uh, RFQ, RFP is in your, your packet. Please review that. Give us any feedback. Um, again, that's it, depending on the amount of feedback that may be on the agenda next uh, week. It may be on for next month. We have a draft format for a LERDA consultant RFP. Again, uh, same thing that the, the, depending on the amount of feedback that we get from that, that may be on this month or it may be on next month. Uh, one of the things that we brought up earlier in the year that we haven't acted on yet that we, we still need to flush out is the Act 172. This is the tax credit ordinance for firefighters. Some of the items, you, you have a, a draft, uh, a, a very, very rough sample draft uh, ordinance, some of the things that need to be vetted out are what criteria would be used for a definition of an active volunteer. Um, what I would recommend to the board at this time with all that's going on at the fire departments is to wait to see what comes back from them as what they're going to use in their bylaws. Um, the We would need to select the percentage of the real estate tax that you would be uh, exempting. We can go up to 20 percent and then we would have to set a dollar amount for the exemption of the EIT. And just as a caveat for all this, just for everybody to remember, this is only applies even if you're a firefighter. Uh, if you're a firefighter in Upper Chichester, it only would apply if you live in Upper Chichester. So it, it does. There is no reciprocity between uh, neighboring municipalities on this. So I'd like you to look at that and give me your feedback on that. Uh, COVID-19 update. Uh, so we've been basically operating under the guidance of the state and the Chester County Health Department. Rec Director Brian Warren and myself had a very nice conversation with Chester uh, County Health Department discussing our uh, facility here and how it should be utilized and what we can do to make sure that we can keep it viable and keep people uh, involved with recreation, but also keep everybody safe. And as always, we are uh, very, very fluid with this and ready to pivot if necessary. So uh, we're going to monitor all situations. There was some guidance that came down from the governor today in relation to K through 12 sports. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that and see how that applies to us at this point. Uh, I have down here 2020 MMO. That's actually the 2021 MMO numbers are in. You have them in your packets. Uh, they're remaining steady. Uh, in, in conjunction with that, last week we had our quarterly pension meeting with the, uh, the pension advisor. And uh, we had some really good news for the year. Um, 
not sure if you remember back towards when this all started, but the board had authorized me to uh, to take the MMO and put it in at different intervals. And one, two of the intervals that we put in, we caught the market really, really low. And since we've gotten some bounce back. So as of right now, we're having a very good year, all things considered. You know, obviously we don't know what the market's going to do for the rest of the year, but uh, our our investment advisor rebalanced to ensure that, you know, we were buying low and we put that extra money in and it, right now it's working out pretty well for us. The next big payment will come in when we get our state aid money that we'll put into that pension uh, as well as the pension. We, I've, as you remember, we've talked about uh, the possibility of funding that and funding post-retirement health care benefits. I've gotten in the actual study for the post-retirement health care benefits. We're going to have to do a deep dive into that to see if that's something that we can manage uh, funding at all at once. So I have all of the professionals that we typically involve in this type of transaction getting together, speaking together, try to figure out what we can do with that. Uh, so I'll have some updates as we go along with that. The uh, items I have uh, under other is we've also completed our annual audit. It was a little late this year, like many municipalities due to uh, the constraints that were placed on our auditors through COVID-19. Uh, the management letters are here to be signed. The audit went very well. We also uh, will have our uh, consolidated audit posted in the Daily Times next week. Um, the, Mike will have to sign the management letters as myself, uh, as well as myself, Joe, if you'd like to review them there in my office for your review. And the last thing I have here is in your packets, we have, uh, we have the three... Uh, what we've received for the towing RFP. We had three people respond to that RFP. Um, and essentially what we'll need to do is determine what course of action the board is going to take. Uh, so at the next meeting, there'll need to be some kind of action. Uh, we currently have a contract that has a stipulation where we can use an alternate. We're currently utilizing that alternate. Uh, I believe that contract also has a 30 day clause that we need to notify uh, the individual. Uh, I'll defer to the lawyer on there because a lot of different things going on there. So I think the board, what I'd like to see happen in is August is determine if that letter is going to go out. And then I think we could wait until September to accept the RFPs. And lots so, of other business as usual. Um, if you have any questions, I'm always here. Our current um, towing contract did not apply, correct? Correct. Or submit an RFP. Correct. Okay. But, but does he think because he's relicensed that his contract, his old contract's good? Uh, so what I currently know is that he's been given a temporary CO to operate his property. We have not gotten any documentation from him yet with a valid salvage license on it. How do you think that looks, Mike? I mean, if he does, where does that put us? I mean, and George, on the um, finance director position, we're just going to take applications see what kind of salaries they're looking at and yeah so the, um, making... what the advertise uh, it, it is in the budget and even in the reforecast for november and december so i don't think we're going to be able to get through all the applicants and an application process and that so um i do i think it's worth getting out there to see what kind of applicants we get in um you know this uh, this has been a position that we've talked about quite some time and it will be it will be proposed in in next year's budget again as well as a, as a position for the township. Uh, we are we are asking them for for uh, salary history and salary requirements, so we would get a good gauge out the gate of how much people are looking to make in the position. So I think it satisfies us, like seeing what the market's like right now. Uh, go ahead. The Act 172, the tax credit ordinance. Is that for is that only for the first responders for for the fire companies, uh, the firefighters and the EMTs, or 
members? Yeah, it, it, so it, it, be a part of that so it's an active member is what the definition is. So there needs to be some kind of criteria set for what is an active member. And that's where I said I would default to kind of what the, what the bylaws are of the fire companies. Because I think that's where your best spot to get what they consider an active, uh, an active volunteer is. Right. What okay. a lot of the municipalities do when they enact this is they require the fire company to certify that they are an active member and actively participating, whether it's however they do it by runs, or they, you know, however they do it in responses. But most of the municipality ones that I've seen, they rely on the fire company to certify to the municipality which ones are active. Okay. I, I also know there was talk on because of that issue of a, a volunteer, what Mike's saying is a member is an active member of the fire department may, may not be an active member of fighting fires or EMS. And I think some of them were also looking at at, the, at some of the meetings I, I attended was maybe not the full extent of the break if that if that person is an active member and meets our criteria and holds an office or does fundraisers and, and shows that they the firefighters may only just hypothetically firefighters may be active in fighting fires, but they had to have like 10 hours a year for whatever active involvement in the fire department where this individual that joined may need 80 or 90 for the year, a lot more. It, it equals out. And that's what they were talking about because it, it was funny. Upper Chai has been doing it for years. And I'm listening to some of the smaller fire companies that started merging together, Rutledge and all them that they're actually bringing people that don't fight the fires to help them do the active administration uh, and stuff like that and things around the building and the fundraising. So they're finally doing that, which Upper Chai has been doing it for since I've been a member of 42 years. So uh, they've been looking at that and that's up to the board of commissioners and whoever implements that ordinance for them. And you're right, we have to look at what their criteria is of an active member. And one of the trends that we're seeing towards active membership is actually just quantifying in hours of service for the year so that that way, you know, someone may get, let's say, let's hypothetically say it's 100, 100 hours a year, right. right? Someone may get 100 hours fighting fires while another person might get 100 hours doing some, doing, you know, administrative work, attending meetings, cleaning, helping assist with, you know, there's, there's it's a, it takes a lot more than just firefighters to right. run a fire company. And I think that's what they were all looking at because you're you're absolutely right because of that reason is, you know, it's all volunteer. So the bottom line is it's still saving every municipality a lot of money when they're still volunteered before you have to pay them. So the only other thing, George, how are we making out with the uh, Jake breaks? Did we ever get a letter to PennDOT about that yet? Okay. Back into the file and pulled out all the all the recommendations and we started that. So. And, and can we reach out to PennDOT again? I think we mentioned this before. Um, I know Meeting House Road Light, and I know I know you got to go through a study, but I guess I would ask next week if we could recommend something to go to PennDOT to ask for a study for Meeting House and Namens Creek Road, because the Meeting House side going in towards Delaware at rush time is backed up to the bridge. And you only get three or four cars. They need to try to get that time at rush hour a little longer. And the same issue on on Joe's ward, this Nary's is Larkin Road coming up to Namens Creek is real short at at times where people you get two cars and next thing you know it's turning green. And does it seem as if it's or got right. if it's off? Because you know, sometimes what they do is they get off their cycle and we send out the. Uh, the, the contractor to go test them to make sure mm -hmm. they're on. So does it seem like it's off or is it that just an ongoing? Oh, no, that's the one on meeting house. The name is Creek's been going on like that forever. Okay. Uh, but the one on Larkin, I just it, heard. It may be, the one on Larkin may be off cycle because I addressed this issue a couple of years ago right. with Chief Robinson. He was, so. well, fired, you know. Okay. Because I know you got to go through the, process of a study and all that stuff and then they'll come back and say I'll give you two seconds. <laughs> well <laughs> that's it. Just to be clear, Mike, you have the list of streets that the board submitted. Great. 
I, if there's no other questions for our solicitor, we'll move on to our vice chair, Commissioner Joe Bacca. Thank you. Um, highway and sanitation got us through another storm this week. I just want to commend them guys again. Um, I, I want to discuss uh, just today Upper Darby's whole entire sanitation department is being quarantined. Um, God forbid something like that was to happen here. I think we need to put a little backup plan in order. I mean, do we have a, a, a contract or somebody we can go to? Uh, we, we don't have that in place right now, but they are taking measures in the department. So uh, as you know, there's only two people on a truck right now. So the intent of having the two people on the truck was to try to, to keep uh, the Yeah, we're doing everything we can, but God forbid. So the the... Essentially, the backup plan right now is that the high, that we would have these. We essentially, through our highway department, have the ability that's three crews, right? So, if the first, if if all the trashmen currently were to go out, then we would pull in up that second crew of highway, all and right. then the third. But you know, it, it is feasible that something like this could happen. Uh, I think what we would do is, I'm not, you know, some of the guidance out there is no longer a 14 day quarantine, so we would look at testing. Um, you know, like kind of like the sports teams doing, could they take, could we do multiple testing days to, to make sure that they're okay? Uh, so I, th I think it, uh, me and you could talk about yeah. it. I mean, I just want to let the rest of the board know. It. I just want to be prepared. God forbid. Worst case scenario, we are going to, uh, we, we've talked about possibly reaching out to other local municipalities and just maybe coming up with a consortium that gives us a backup plan. Yeah. Now, I don't want to see two weeks of trash line out. <laughs> Joe, can I? I don't I, think anybody does. Can I piggyback on that because sure. I wanted to? I wanted to do that with uh, not on the COVID, on the George, but it's more of a question for Mike. You're absolutely correct. We're having an issue, and I need to address this. How do we? Can the board of commissioners send a letter to the fire department underneath the CDC about the requirements of of this? Because here's the issue. They're training together, what they're doing, and I'm a little jumping ahead of mine just for a second, that what they just did, they're all together now. But it's not, I don't think they believe COVID is COVID. Most eight or nine of those firemen are in our sanitation highway department. We got a chance of wiping out, not just that, the whole Upper Chichester Fire Department at the time. Can there be a recommendation from the board on the guidelines of CDC that you have to social distance? You have to do that. We're concerned because the gatherings are getting bigger, which is good because they're all consolidating the, the operational side and their training, but they're also socializing. And like I said, eight of those people are actually workers here at the township, and, and it could wipe out not just that, the whole fire department. Is there... I, I think I think the recommendation would come from by way of a letter, more of a not a dictate, but a reminder letter that there are certain protocols to be in place and first responders and members of the township workforce are included in that. And maybe you can George you can send that kind of a reminder letter as to what those protocols should be. I think that's probably the only way you can handle it. You right. can't mandate them right, to right. do, but I think a, a reminder letter saying, look, you know, although you're doing work as first responders, please understand that the guidance from the state and the CDC dictates as follows and try and do what you can related to that. I think that's really all you can do at this stage. I would like some. I mean, I'm just saying, I would like something coming from us saying, like you said, not we can't enforce it, but a reminder. Yeah, something. I think a reminder it's, letter. Thank you, Joe. Um, street lighting and traffic signals. Um, out of request, uh, the entrance to Orchard Lane off of Cherry Tree Road is uh, a little dark. We have an existing pole out there, and we probably have extra street lighting that we saved as backups and stuff when we did the project. Um, for less than a couple hundred bucks, we could probably appease these people. And I just want to see if the board would uh, be okay with going through on that. Say that again, Joe. 
coming in Orchard uh, Way off of Cherry Tree Road. Technically, inside the development, they have a HOA. We don't handle their street lights. But out at the entrance, it's dark, getting in and out of the development. That, there's an existing pole sitting right there where we, all we would have to do is throw a light on it. And I think we possibly may even have spare lights. The, the, yeah. I mean, Cherry the, Tree gets a lot of walkers, too, and yeah. that area is very dark. So. I think Joe and Joe, Joe and uh, all right. good just wanted to make sure. Okay. Um, Joe and Water, um, I have a report on file. Uh, I have a little more to discuss on that next week. I'll give a little more detailed report. That's all I have if there's no questions. Yeah. Any questions for uh, Commissioner Baca? Now we'll move on to uh, Commissioner Ed Rikowski. Um Nicole Whitaker's not here tonight. Um, yeah, um, Ed, can you hold? Yeah, I can so wait. For one yeah. second, we'll mm -hmm. have um, our township manager go over Commissioner Whitaker's report. All right, so you have some reports in the file from uh, Nicole. She'll go over them next week. Uh, the, the items, action items, is uh, a couple of years back, uh, I believe it was 2014, Governor Corbett changed the, uh, the uh, fee and lieu, the law that dictates the fee and lieu, to allow for a larger breadth of uses. Um, and uh, our ordinance still reads the old language. So we, what we were hoping to do is possibly get the board to consider an amendment. I have the act in your uh, in your folders to take a look at. So essentially, if, if you're in agreement with something like this, when we would authorize Mike to prepare an ordinance on this, and then we would go forward. We still control them funds, though, right? Yeah, so so basically the way the fee and lieu works is it, it, it actually is supposed to, the way ordinance reads now, it's dictated by the uh, the the rec board is supposed to give a give a report on how the fund should be used based off of the most current rec, uh, master parks and recreation plan. So that plan currently is our 2005 comp plan. Now, Brian has been awarded funding to do a new master parks plan. So we would then use that. So essentially what this would do is allow for a larger variety of the use. So for instance, repairs to a recreation facility under the old way that it's written in our ordinance would not be an acceptable use for fee and loo money. However, a that would be an acceptable use for fee and loo money in, in the way that the law states now. So we would be updating the ordinance to allow for that. And then what they would do is continue to bring in once a year, the fee and loo money they received from the previous year. Here's a list of projects that they'd like to fund using that money. So it could be anything from you know, let's we put the fans in the gym last year. Technically, there was we couldn't use we couldn't use fee and loo money for that last year. But if we adopt this, that could be something that's fee and loo. But we we are still the ones to determine where the money goes. Yeah. We're not handing that over to the rec board. Well, the rec board's supposed to present to you. Right. So you, but yeah, yeah. It still comes through us. Yep. Okay. And then uh, the next is uh, there's a couple of requests for fee reductions. Uh, some of these were changes in rosters from last month. And then another one, uh, one is that we've got another uh, another group that would like to run a tournament in here. Obviously, like with what I said earlier, this could be up in the air. So we're going to get a little bit more information between now and next week to discuss this with you guys. Uh, that's, I think, all I got. Yep. Okay. Um, thank you, George. Uh, we'll move on to the Commissioner Everett Kasky. Thank you. Um, everybody has a copy of the emergency management report. Um, they were on standby this past storm that we just had. Uh, we were very fortunate. A little bit of flooding, a couple of trees here and there, nothing real big. Some power outage, uh, but everybody was ready and able to do what we had to do. Uh, the DCED study, um, I still need a few more dates or a date or anything in September. Uh, let's see, we have a uh, the budget review meeting starting to pick up, so we're going to be having them. Uh, but I'd like to get something going. I talked to the uh, gentleman that did the uh, study for us today, uh, let them know what was going on. Regards to the fire department and the study, and this should give the new director some time to be able to read our study, get to know her consultants, and then have a meeting, which we would have to advertise because it's going to be the board of commissioners with this committee 
for a uh, Q&A about the study. Uh, it's going to have to be opened up to the public because it's probably going to be most of us here. Uh, please read the study. Uh, a lot of it's graphs and, and stuff from the census, but a lot of it also has the finances, the recommendations of from the uh, consultant, and then some uh, examples of other ones throughout the state. So I'd like to try to get something going in December or September for that. Uh, on that note, this, the training for the fire department, that was one of the reasons I pushed it to September. Is August is still summertime, vacation, new director. Uh, the fire department are done their uh, training on the 322 buildings. Uh, I want to give a kudos out to them. It was a nice article in the Daily Times the other day on the operational consolidation. And um, we'll see how that goes. I know on that storm the other night, the tropical storm, they responded to 14 alarms just that day. Uh, so they were busy. Uh, everything worked out pretty well. Also, just uh, just on the other note, for uh, if you hear anything out there on my other, I put it here to, tonight. Uh, Walgreens is now closed. Uh, Walgreens d did not own the property; they leased it. It is up for sale or lease. Um, and I know we're going to try to get it out on our economic development page and help them out and try to get something in there sooner the better. There is nothing on the table. Uh, there's rumors out there floating around. I'm not going to elaborate on any rumor until we actually get any paperwork. What's that property zone? I, I guess it's got to be C1 over there because it's residential. Um, but I do know the asking price right now is $2.1 million. <laughs> so if you have it in your back pocket, Joe, you could buy it. <laughs> but no, uh, so there's nothing on our table as commissioner or the township. I'm sure you're going to hear rumors. I, I do stuff on Facebook already. I got a, just a regard. I'm not on Facebook, but it did get to me about it. Things going in there. We know. Nah, that was not part of the rumor as of now. <laughs> uh, we did reach out to Sunnies, and they are not interested because uh, I know the original plans back in the day. Sunnies were was looking at that property, but they are not interested in it now. Other than that, that's it. Any questions for Commissioner Rakowski? That we move on to Commissioner Joe Neary. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, in your packets tonight, there's the uh, list of bills for $521,091.98. There are three um, refunds for next week. You also have in your package the uh, police, the monthly police report, and um, you'll shortly be getting the schedule for the budget review process, correct? Uh, the August meeting, Thursday the 30th. Uh, I'm sorry, the 20th. Sure. <laughs> I'll send out some time. To everybody. Okay. Um, the only thing, the only other thing that was uh, brought to my attention is we received a letter from a gentleman, George uh, Spanbauer, who lives over on Johnson Avenue, and he was concerned about the uh, traffic on Chichester Avenue at 95. The the fact that they're speeding and it's hard to get out. And I spoke to George about it. He said, PennDOT is looking at that. This is the area that will eventually be the roundabouts. But this gentleman is concerned about the fact that the um, bus shelter was flattened uh, by a car. Um, so he's concerned. And fortunately, no one was in the bus shelter. But um, he's concerned about it. But PennDOT is reviewing the situation and may come up with some changes, but, or, um, and I know Representative Barrar's office is also involved in it. So I just wanted to let you know that that was one of the thing, and that's all I have. Questions for Commissioner Neary? If not, we'll wrap up with my report. Just on the, the highly bus shelters, I know we've talked about this for a long time now, on the corner of Larkin and Chai Avenue about getting a trash receptacle at that uh, bus shelter. Um, I know, at one point in time, I, I believe it was going in. Um, I don't know what the delay was, but I'm, I still like to get that in there. I promised my resident and uh, I'd like to put it up. Uh, license and inspections. Uh, I'm, I'm sure the board is aware um, that the DEP approval uh, letter came in for the old schoolhouse. So that's, that's one of the main reasons why we were able to issue permits. So 
just like to thank everybody for um, working on that and seeing it through. Uh, planning and zoning, um, we pretty much discussed that tonight about the Gag Gagliali McDermott um, will be advertising uh, for a public hearing for the changing and zoning. And I'm hoping to get uh, 800 Galbraith Avenue in, in here as quickly as possible so the board can vote on that as well. Uh, last month, um, I believe we reported on um, there was two hearings at, at the zoning board. Uh, both were approved. Um, is my understanding the one was a variance um, from a 50 foot year from a 50 foot yard setback to a 41.83 roughly roughly 42 feet and then the other variance which um, I'd like to talk about tonight um, is between two buildings it was reduced it went from 35 feet down to 12 feet um, I believe there was a little bit of confusion of how this was going to be handled um, I have a copy of the um, zoning minutes, and a part of it says that we're going to have a stipulation that the fire marshal has to be contacted. Um, I don't know exactly what that means at this point in time. My understanding was that um, before the zoning board was going to rule on it, um, the fire marshal was going to give, um, I guess, some comments on it, whether or not he thought this was a good idea or not. Um, that did not happen. So I was hoping that our solicitor could reach out to the zoning board solicitor and just ask what that sentence actually means. We're, we, we're going to have a stipulation that the fire marshal has to be contacted. Uh, I, I did speak with the zoning board. Okay. There was nobody that appeared who was authorized to appear in That's 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 what I said at the public meeting, yeah, no, and that's what was communicated that. to me. But I so yeah, I, again, so there was a disconnect. I don't know. If there was a disconnect. Apparently, there was a disconnect because they there was no request of the zoning hearing board to hold off any decision. I have a question. They say the fire marshal. There's only 12 foot between these buildings now. 
You're going to tell me you could set, put a fire truck in 12 foot and set it up to put a fire out? Uh, do we have an argument that if his report comes back, like, I've questioned this from the beginning, but we can't go to a zoning board meeting. We're, we're, I thought uh, as commissioners, we're not allowed them. Right. Can't we appeal it? Appeal it. I don't know that you're going to, you're going to have the grounds, and you're going to spend a lot of money on the appeal. That would have to be something that you need to authorize it to do. I believe Craig submitted a report, from my understanding. So I'd like to get a copy of it. Correct, Mike. Correct me if I'm wrong. The zoning board could have given a stipulation of. They, they granted the relief with any conditions that the fire marshal would find and would want imposed. If the fire marshal had submitted a report, they, 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 we can't they, do it and just say leave it open ended and say, you know, with, with any recommendation of the fire marshal, the applicant would never, they would never know. What, well, they what would because they would, have, they would have to get the report from the fire marshal. That and now because here's it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the expert, but I trust who who I went to to get to some of this information. I'm not going to say it on record. I would do something, but I, I would. Hide. We they cannot. The zoning board cannot go to the fire marshal. The only ones that can. Re, they can't even talk to each other regarding the relief that came to their table to that until that night. They can't go to the fire marshal prior to their meeting and say, or zoning board member and say, hey, what do you think about this? The planning board can, but the zoning can't. I under I didn't say I was going to say no. What I'm saying is I understand that part. I, I've heard that three or four times already. What I'm saying is they could have put stipulations on whatever the fire marshal's report came back to. Fire marshal's report had been received. Fire no. Had been no. Received. Somebody needs to look into that a little more. No, it doesn't have to be before. I, I I'm sorry. Tell you, Fisher, but all I can tell you is. I, I don't believe so. I don't believe that's how it is. No, they, I didn't say that. I said they could have gave the decision with any stipulation that needed to be done. I disagree. Um, I don't. They, they, they continue it before the final what? decision is made or they make a decision. In this case, they made a decision. So, you know, again, you can't just hold it open like you can. You can't, like, Maybe the example of the planning commission. The planning commission could say, pending approval of the engineer's comments, pending approval of the fire marshal's comments. That's not what the zoning hearing board does. The zoning hearing board can only act on what is presented in front of them. They can't speculate as to what the fire marshal may or may not say related to this. Township has concerns about that, then their option is to send somebody to object to it or to send a letter to the zoning hearing board saying, We have a problem with this, therefore, you either get the comments in advance of making the decision or you hold off making the decision until you have those comments. That didn't happen here That's for whatever right. reason. That's why I didn't put the issue of sending a letter to Ed because it was communicated that, and apparently there's a disconnect here, that the fire marshal, that, that the fire marshal was going to provide some type of review on behalf of board of commissioners saying whether or not he had any uh, concerns. So, anyway. So my question would be, if they can put up a building that 
if it catches on fire, it can't be put out. There's nothing we can do. Well, they have it happens. I mean, that's all they have. I mean, there's things that maybe you could do. I don't know if they'll firewall for sprinkler systems, that force them to put sprinkler systems in. Systems in. I don't, I mean, I'm just speculating. They still have a profession for, for their permitting and their approval. Our, our professionals would have to. Uh, but the, but the, the, the baseline question, can they construct that building within those areas? And the answer is they have a barriers to do that. They still have to conform the code. Well, I think the lesson learned here is, you know, we set letters in the past. And, th and if we have I any other I thought we weren't allowed to influence that board. No, no, no. We've done it in the past. No. We, yeah, we, okay. we have. Yeah. Like for a door, I hear it. The board said, I want you to to the zoning hearing board and object. So I don't, I don't think we should depend on any type of independent reviews. We need to um, send a letter out on behalf of the board as we typically do. Right. The, the, the planning commission is a different act. You can do that, but you know because it's ultimately going to have the planning commission. Well, they're is just advisory. Correct. To begin with. Zoning hearing is their own. Their own. It's their own board. Judicial they're independent of us. Correct. Remember, too, that this will go through the land development process. But this building will go through a land development. So we'll, we'll see it. We we'll do what we can. We may end up fighting it at that point because their answer is going to be we have parents. Our answer is going to be because it's So, like I said, that's why I said it's not necessarily over. That decision is over. I don't have anything else. Does anybody have any questions for me? Mike, I just have one item uh, in reference to that. Uh, I sent you guys an email about two weeks ago about an application that did come in for zoning hearing board for Market Street. I don't know if that's in your re uh, in your report, um, but it was in reference to the property now known as Fat Boy Customs. Uh, they are requesting, I believe, a very, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're familiar with the property, it was an old dilapidated gas station. Uh, if you go down there now, there currently is a sign out front indicating the business that's there and an LED uh, sign underneath it with information about the property. It appears from the application that what they're looking to do is replace that very tall, old, uh, it was either Texaco or Amico sign with an LED sign up there advertising an off-site uh, business. So uh, as I raised the concerns in my, in my email, um, I don't know if that complies with PennDOT's requirements for offsite uh, outdoor advertising uh, due to its proximity to the off and on ramps there. And then you have a, uh, a, a neighborhood directly behind that. So previously they had a sign that was a stationary lit sign there. Um, and then this is proposing a LED sign. Number sir, you correct me. I, I received the email. I responded to the email uh, and just asking to make sure our professionals review it, make sure everything's up to code, and to you know notify the commissioners who awarded them. That would be something that I think would be brought brought in front of you next week, as if this is something the board would like to go to the have a professional go to the zoning hearing board to contest or not. Yes. Thank you. Is that on their property, George? It's on their property, the old gas station. All right. If there's no any questions for me, have a motion to adjourn. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight.